I went to the thrift store and I picked up an old LCD monitor and I got it home and even though I checked it out when I was at home I thought that I mean when I checked it out at the thrift store I didn't think there were any cracks in it but as soon as I turned it on there was a big gnarly crack across it and it was all black and I'm like, oh no well I just wasted some money so I decided to crack it open and take yeah take the polarizers off the front and back of the LCD screen. So I got these two really large polarizing sheets. It was pretty hard to get off the glass because it's got a sticky back. I also took the backlight and now I'm using the backlight as a backlight for the down camera. Genius! So a lot of us have seen on polarizers, if you take one, you put it down, and then you rotate the other, it'll block the light. Like that. Here's uh, kind of a conceptual drawing of how this works. So you have light coming in one polarizer sheet, and it's all scrambled up and going in different orientations. And it goes through kind of like a grating, and it filters out all but one plane of, of light. And then if you have another polarizer rotated 90 degrees, that will prevent the light from continuing on through the polarizers. Now if you put something between here that can rotate the light, like liquid crystals in a liquid crystal display, you can turn on little areas where the light will continue through the polarizer at different, different degrees of brightness. Right now, if we put materials underneath, so now I have a, a plastic bag I'm putting on top of the top one polarizer, and I put a polarizer on top of it. We see there's some beautiful colors in there. Oh! And after a little research, I found that these colors can come from stress in materials. So if I start pulling on this plastic and stressing the materials, the molecules will start lining up in a particular orientation and rotate the light. So you can see applied stress. So we have some other examples of this. Here's another bag, really pretty iridescence. Some plastic cube. And this one's pretty interesting. This is an acrylic rod. I'll zoom in on this one a little bit. Where it's been cut, there's some stress on the end. It's a little bit different than in the middle. It's changed the molecular structure. And if I take this, and I, it's pretty big, but if I bend it as hard as I can, you can see the stress changing in the material. So I started experimenting with other clear materials like glass. I found a so we look at this sheet of glass I put under here, it really doesn't affect the polarization of the light going through it. But if I take, I take a soldering iron and I apply heat, it's causing the glass to expand near the solder tip and it's causing stress in the glass and you can see this. And I found that Glass, people that work with glass use this technique all the time. They get buy these expensive glass stress analyzers, which are just polarizers. And they check um, the compatibility of glass when they melt it together. Here's an example of a piece of Pyrex glass and soda lime glass that I put under the torch and melted together. I'm not sure if we can get it to show up or not. But you can see that there's a lot of little lines of stress in it because it's incompatible expansion rates in the, the two types of glass. This is just pretty. This is a, a vacuum molded lid. Starts out as a flat sheet of plastic and then gets stamped or run through a, a vacuum mold machine. You can see by stressing it, it changes the So if you need to look for stress in materials, 
take apart an old LCD, get the polarizers, or go find some polarizers. Well, that's brilliant, Jerry. Like, let's say, uh, uh, let's say I'm I'm installing a new windshield on the old car, right? And I'm not sure if I've uh, sort of pushed too hard on one corner or another, you know. Uh, and and maybe it's under stress, and I don't know about it. Maybe I haven't laid it in evenly. Let's try. <laughs> Let's try right now. See if I can I slice know. my wrist open. But I'll put Good. I'll put something underneath and see if I can flex this piece of glass. All right, here's the. All right, we'll put a this plexiglass rod underneath. We'll put the glass on top. And make eye on it. Well, I can't can't quite see anything in this this piece of glass, but it's about okay. a quarter Here's something inch thick. Isn't, Jerry, we're seeing now. We know that it's going to build. We know from our past experience that this is a good way to break glass because it creates a very clean stress riser right where that rod is. Have we got something that won't light up like that rod does? Like a little metal rod that we can put under there so that we can see what the effects actually are on the glass? Because yeah. we might not be able to see. The, the effects might all be concentrated exactly where that rod is. Let me get some gloves. Okay, a stress riser, guys, is a little, is a little thing I picked up from an engineer that I lived with. <laughs> a stress riser is uh, uh, it's a feature in a, in a structure that causes all the forces that are stressing that piece to sort of gather in one place. Like if you have a nick on a long piece of plastic and then you start bending the plastic then oh, that, it'll bend a little more where that nick is and that'll cause more and more stress to happen right where that nick is and it's a stress riser and the thing will break there now window it's, glass you might be able to see this inside of it because inside safety window glass is a plastic lamination so perhaps you could see some stresses on that it there. seems to really work well with it. Jerry, actually, come to think of it, in the corner of my Rolls Royce, my old beater, you know, good, bad, in the corner of the windshield, there is a spot in the safety glass where it looks like there's this weird stressy star, and I wonder if that's exactly what you discovered. Well, <laughs> how's your hand? I have gloves on, so all right. I didn't see anything. All right. It's it's worth exploring more. Yes, it's worth exploding more. That's our slogan. You can also use a regular LCD screen from a laptop and polarizing sunglasses to get the same effect. <laughs>